Experts say vitamin C is one of the safest and most effective nutrients out there. But what actually is it and why is it so good? Let's find out. I'm Katie Braun, product developer at MyProtein. Did you know that vitamin C is actually just the recognizable name for ascorbic acid, which is essential for our overall health and well-being? Humans can't make it ourselves though, so we must get our daily fix through our diet. It functions as a cofactor, a helping hand, so to speak, which aids the reaction of enzymes to maintain essential biological functions, lots of which we'll cover when we go through the proven benefits of vitamin C. It is classed as water-soluble, so it can dissolve in water both outside the body, in foods which have a high water content, and within the body. The downside to this is that if we don't utilize it quickly, we can lose it through urine. It can't be stored. If we consume enough, however, you'll find it most commonly in our bodies in areas like white blood cells, our eyes, and our brain. Vitamin C is an antioxidant, which means it's antioxidation. Basically, it prevents damage to cells caused by oxidative stress from free radicals. Free radicals are unstable atoms which are highly reactive on a constant search in our body to find other atoms to bind with. This can cause pretty unfavorable reactions, though, that can range from DNA to cellular damage in all parts of the body. This is why researchers have taken great interest in vitamin C for decades, based on the evidence that oxidative damage is associated with, or even in some cases, the root cause of many diseases. Right, that's your crash course on what vitamin C is, so let's talk through some of the proven benefits. The first one is immunity. Vitamin C contributes to the maintenance of normal function of the immune system. As I said, vitamin C is in white blood cells, or lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are the overarching term for a range of cells. Lymphocytes themselves, branded the natural killer cells, which respond to viruses. T cells, which are for cell-mediated immunity, which doesn't involve antibodies. And B cells, for antibody-driven immunity. Having an adequate intake of vitamin C actually aids the proliferation of lymphocytes, and this is where the connection with immunity comes in. More specifically on immunity, you may have heard a lot of connections with vitamin C and the common cold. However, research is still pretty divided. A scientific review which examined doses of 200 milligrams a day concluded vitamin C didn't prevent the common cold. However, taking vitamin C on a regular basis did reduce the average duration by 8% in adults and 14% in children and can also reduce the severity of the colds. Whilst it might not fight the sneezes and sniffles from starting, it could help you ride out the common cold a little easier. Since supplementing with vitamin C is deemed safe, can be done at relatively low cost and has a range of other benefits to your general well-being, if you're prone to the winter woes, it might be worthwhile to consider supplementing and see if it works for you. The second benefit is iron absorption. Vitamin C increases iron absorption, particularly important for non-heme iron. Let's recap. Dietary iron has two main forms, heme and non-heme. Plants and iron-fortified foods contain non-heme iron only. This form must be solubilized and hydrolyzed before absorption is possible, and vitamin C can help this. As well, ascorbic acid also works to mitigate the negative effects on iron absorption of the compounds phytates and tannins, which hinder its absorption. These are compounds found in plant foods and widespread in our diets. Think beans and nuts, plus tea in the case of tannins. This is why you might see orange juice being recommended as an alternative to a cup of tea in an iron-rich breakfast, particularly if you're at risk of iron deficiency. Vitamin C also contributes to normal collagen formation for bones, cartilage, and skin. Collagen is a structural protein that our bodies produce, break down over time as we age, and therefore supplementing helps to boost our natural levels. Whilst it does support muscle growth, its primary role is actually boosting the health of these high turnover cells in the body. During collagen production, Individual collagen subunits we describe as pro-collagen are linked together in threes by a molecule named hydroxyproline to create the final collagen fibers. Vitamin C is an essential element in the levels of hydroxyproline in the body, so you can see how our body supplies are essential to facilitate this mechanism for collagen production. Vitamin C also works to improve energy levels and reduce fatigue by supporting energy yielding metabolism. Simply, it helps our bodies make the most of the energy we can get from our food. In particular, it plays a vital role in the production of carnitine. This is a molecule that transports fatty acids to the mitochondria, the powerhouse of our cells. Here, they are converted to available energy. It also works to reduce fatigue through its relationship with cortisol, a steroid hormone. This is because your adrenal glands contain high concentrations of vitamin C when consuming enough, 
and they use it to produce cortisol. When your body is subject to stress, and that can be both mental and physical, like inflammation, adrenal glands release cortisol to help the body cope. Less stress equals less tiredness. All in all, studies have shown that people who consume high amounts of vitamin C have a lower risk of chronic diseases, like heart disease, cancer, and neurodegenerative conditions. However, it's worth remembering that on population studies, so the studies examining everyday people like you and me, and relating their intakes of vitamin C with the risk of disease, in general, people with high vitamin C intakes are going to tend to have a more balanced diet and healthier lifestyle. These things go hand in hand. So bear in mind that the more healthy diet or lifestyle they have, in general, that will be contributing to the level of vitamin C too. Remember too that high vitamin C intakes often aren't a conscious choice. The makeup of our diets across demographics, cultures and geographical locations, as well as the accessibility to foods like fresh fruit and vegetables, all impact our levels of macronutrients and can be, to a large extent, out of our control. Currently, evidence from controlled clinical trials, so ones where we give people specific vitamin C doses and control other elements across the groups, like diets, we haven't conclusively established that higher intakes of vitamin C alone will help prevent chronic degenerative diseases. Its role as an antioxidant, however, plus all the benefits mentioned, make us pretty confident that vitamin C has earned its place as the vitamin OG. So that's vitamin C, what do you think? Have any more questions? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're new here or haven't done it yet, remember to like this video and subscribe to the My Protein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.